hard to show her full view. So I'll just kind of scoot her down a little bit. And there. That's a good spot for right now. All right, so the lovely Merlin is stitched on 32 count Laurel Linen by Witchell, which is the recommended fabric. Uh, stitched two over two, except for her skin, which is done one over one. Um, I did end up using all the recommended Mill Hill beads. I thought that there was going to be a couple I switched out, but it didn't quite work out, so I had to go and get a couple more beads so that I was doing everything that the pattern said. Um, all the DMC is pretty much the same. There was two green colors that I kind of changed in her tail, but it was such a small change that it's not really worth noting. Alright, so this pattern always looked very moody and she looked very forlorn and yearning just sitting at the bottom of the ocean you know coveting her treasure and so I felt I felt like she should just be under you know just basking in the moonlight and so I took the fish out and charted a moon if we're in its place and I used the the clamshell uh, as a guide for the size, I got a height and width a stitch count for it and then kind of used that um, and then a compass on some graph paper to help kind of get the outline of the moon and then I just kind of squiggled in some outlines for uh, the different shading and it just... I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky with my squiggles and the colors that I picked for the moon um, for how well I think it turned out. I used uh, three different Weeks Dye Works flosses for the colors and then I added some just some regular uh, seed beads and then I have some petite beads also in the moon. They're pretty hard to see because they're kind of a clear iridescent color um, but they're in there they're kind of like right here and here it's just kind of to add a little bit of sparkle in that little like veiny part of the moon and then again I just penciled in uh, some wispy clouds and kind of guessed on what colors to use I thought about using some gray colors but I thought it would look it wouldn't stand out enough against the moon. So get in a little bit closer. Alright. So let's see. So I did her skin one over one. Um I think I kind of talked about the whole blended thread um, issue that I had in another update but basically um, I've seen and read that you should when you have blended colors for doing one over one you should do the darkest color on the bottom leg and the lightest color on the top leg and I did that in this part of her face and then I realized it looks almost exactly like this part and the only thing I feel that makes it stand out is just the fact that I stitched them separately and so maybe there's a little bit different um, tension or you can kind of see where I that border of where I you know stitched out and like that but really you can't see a noticeable difference in the shading and so then when I got down to here all through here I just decided to skip it and I chopped the blocks kind of in half either horizontally or vertically um, and did it that way and then I also 
filled in her hand a bit because there was actually like a pretty good chunk right here that wasn't even charted for any stitching and it looked a little bit funny to me so I filled that in. The one thing I will mention is that um, when you're stitching one over one on linen, it may look a little bit more uh, organic, if you will. Uh, see if I can get in close and try and hold this a little bit steady for you. So if you see right in here, there's a fat slub and I couldn't even tell where the holes were, like where the actual thread was. I don't know. It was just a big mess and I actually had to pierce the, the slub in order to do the crosses. And so because it's such a light color thread on a dark color thread, you can kind of see it poking through. But that was the only like big slub that I had to deal with. I got lucky that there wasn't anything else um, in that area. But all in all, I think it looks pretty good. And again, let me get in. The stitches are so tiny, there's no way you're gonna be able to tell if the bottom leg is darker and the top leg is lighter for, at least for the shading that this was, cause the color's already so similar you're never going to be able to tell so it's not in my for me it's not worth the extra effort of having to do the two color threads in this skin because you really can't tell but there we go down there we go sorry it's a little bit jerky you can see honor treasure um so i i thought i was going to be able to use some regular seed beads for these gold ones that i already had but they were not going to fit cuz all these little like these red clusters they were so tight and compact and i was even going diagonally like in a straight line i knew it wasn't going to fit so i went buckled down and got the Magnificas. And then in here, uh, this is the first is the espresso that I had that I didn't really like and I had to strategically cut it to get that coloring in it just because I felt that the sable was going to be a little bit too dark um, if I used it there. And so I didn't want it to be too much of a dark blob in here. And the other big change I made was the color of the pedestal. Again, it was supposed to be, you know, this sable color, but with the 3371 right here and the back stitching, it you wouldn't be able to tell what like any kind of defining characteristics of it and it just looked like a dark blob and if you read the description it says that she's you know swimming through some marble halls and Greek columns and I figured well that's gonna be white marble and I already had this thread that I was using for the moon and I thought it would look really good and more marbly so I went ahead and added that in and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah. I love all the beading in her tail. It's so pretty. Alright, it's gonna get jerky again real quick. There we go. Alright, so the other big change that I did was I moved the clamshell to the bottom and I attempted to make it look like it was sitting on a pile of treasure and the goal was to make this treasure kind of match the one that she was holding, but when I 
had got to this point, I was just, I don't know, I was in a funky mood and I was just like, I just want this over and done with. So I, I, I didn't pre-game it very well and my strands of pearls look a little funny and my random pearls maybe look a little bit funny, but after I had, I had gone too far when I decided I didn't know how I felt about it to take it out, so I just kind of left it. And I mean, you get the idea. It's pretty close. But, so, since I had this here and I took the crest out, I added, I think, these two other finny things and then had to kind of rechart this area. Um, this part looks a little bit funny, but again, I was just kind of over it, and especially because I wasn't going to take out this water lily and kind of mess up the the silk thread, it. so I just kind of left it. Um, let's see, and then in here, in these three areas, I added um, all that krennic. It's supposed to be this green color here, but I just love this color so much and I wanted to incorporate more of it in. It's just a really pretty kind of black and blue color and when it catches the light, oh, oh it's just so pretty. I love it so much. And the filigree, that's all there. And then for the backstitch border, I had intended to do do it in this Krennic color like the pattern calls for, but when I was back stitching the filigree, I wasn't really paying attention and I just, you know, I saw the back stitch line so I kept back stitching around it and when I realized my mistake, I was just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And so I was just like, well, this is fine, so I'll just leave it and um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. But I'll move in again so you can see a bit more. That Bermuda Reef water lilies though is so pretty. I wasn't sure how I felt about it when it was just in this scheme because it looked like it had some like kind of like really like bright neon-y parts but it's it turned out real nice. And then over here. So yeah, I think that is just about everything I have to say about her. Scan back up. Oh, sorry if that was shaky. But that is Mermaid of Atlantis. And I'm so happy and sad that she's finished. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life now. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next update. Bye.